Rafael Nadal just withdrew from the Indian Wells Tournament. Now, does that really come as a surprise? Was that expected? Personally, I don't know. Some people are going back and forth on this topic. Uh, people are saying that Rafael Nadal is completely done when it comes to hardcore, that he was never actually going to play at Indian Wells. He was never actually going to play at Australian Open and or Doha or whatever was his schedule. And that basically he's just solely focused on the clay season, trying to win Roland Garros hashtag 15. Now, some people are going kind of extreme compared to that version, saying that Rafael Nadal is completely done done that there is sort of a PR machinery putting out content of Rafael Nadal playing practice sets playing practice sessions telling you that he's going to participate in this in this tournament but he's actually really done and just kind of milking his retirement and kind of related to that people are saying that Rafael Nadal went to America basically to grab a quick meal or two or five for the Netflix slam to hang out with some people and that he was never actually going to play at the Indian Wells tournament now uh, if you want to vote if you want to publicly state your opinion of Rafael Nadal pulling out the Indian Wells tournament feel free to vote the link will be down in the description box now personally I have a couple of positives and I have a couple of negative things to say about Rafael Nadal handling his sort of like retirement phase. Um, I think that Rafael Nadal is a guy who relates on confidence and that he sees that his body uh, just doesn't have it anymore. And he's not a guy, and Djokovic said this, he's not a guy who's going to go out there and compete when he's like not ready 100%. He's not a guy who's going to go out there playing 70%, you know, playing some guys, like playing number 27s and losing and coming, sort of like an Andy Murray. Like he's not Andy Murray when it comes to that. Like he's going to either withdraw or either want to win the tournament or think in his head that he can win the tournament. And right now, I think he's stuck like in no man's land. He knows that he's not ready. But he probably wants to try, but he doesn't want to. He hates losing. He hates going out and like kind of competing versus guys that he was comfortably beating five, six years ago. And he doesn't really want to do it. But there is some be somebody, I guess his PR pushing him, trying to make him play these tournaments. So we kind of end up in this weird situation when he's pulling out, telling about injuries, or actually not even saying that he's injured. Like in his tweet, he didn't mention any injuries. He played in the Netflix slam a couple of days ago. He just said that he was wasn't ready so by that I think he means that okay looking at his draw maybe he can beat Milos Raonic and by the odds makers he was actually the favorite like sort of like a 2-1 to one favorite versus Milos Raonic which is I think perfectly fine I think if they play three times Nadal beats him twice but then he would play Holger Rune and do you really think that Nadal would beat Holger Rune maybe if he plays really good but that's just round two and then it's Shapovalov and then it's Medvedev or Dimitrov and then Djokovic and basically Nadal was never going to win that tournament so Nadal is looking at those players and going like man I'm not really winning this tournament what am I doing here I hate doing this I might as well just focus trying to you know gain some confidence gain some momentum going into the Roland Garros tournament um what I think it was weird is that the Indian uh, Indian Wells tournament publicly stated a week before the draw that Rafael Nadal is going to play March the 7th, this and this time, center court Indian Wells. And that never really happens. Like, how can you say that world number 600 something, or even world number one, let's say that it's Novak Djokovic, how can you say that this guy before the draw is going to play there like you can technically say it if it's world number one and Wimbledon technically does it because that's their tradition like you can technically say okay number one is going to be that part of the draw he's going to play that in that time but Nadal is like a nobody at right now like he doesn't have a ranking basically you cannot say this random guy is just playing on March the 7th whatever time it is to sell tickets that's kind of weird and then to play the Netflix slam, not get injured, and then say, well, I'm not really ready to play professional tennis. That's just kind of weird, withdrawing. And, and Nova got a lot of heat for not withdrawing before the Indian Wells Miami tournaments when he couldn't play because of the visa things. Like he was hoping to get the visa to travel to America, but he couldn't. And then he got heat because, oh my God, Novak Djokovic doesn't allow world number 97 to get into the Indian Wells tournament because he's selfish. And now Nadal, you know, does even a kind of weirder thing, just pulls out less than 24 hours before the tournament. So it's, it's, it's really interesting and weird. And I totally understand why are people like, suspicious skeptical when it comes to the whole situation now another thing that 
I kind of don't like, and I wish Nadal was was doing this. I wish Nadal would do this. Everybody knows that Nadal loves clay. Everybody knows that Nadal hasn't been the same player in hard court since 2013. And everybody knows that the only thing that Nadal really wants is to win, win the French Open one more time. So why doesn't he just come out and say it? Like, why does he... Like, why didn't he play at Rio? Like, why was his schedule Australian Open? Okay, you withdraw. And then Doha. What do you do in Doha? And then Indian... What do you do in Indian Wells? Like, you're not even... You don't even want to win that tournament. Like, why didn't you just go into Rio or Chile or whatever, play warm-up tournament, and then go to Monte Carlo, then get to Rome or Barcelona or Madrid or whatever your schedule is, trying to get ready for the French Open. I think it would be perfectly fair. Now, some people criticized Federer for doing this uh, in like 2016, 17, 18. I think he played in 19 and 21. Yes, he played in 19 and 21. He didn't play in 10, but 20 was a half top season and he was injured anyways. Federer, so Federer was publicly doing this. He was just like, I'm not going to play at the clay season. I don't really care. I want to win Wimbledon. And that's perfectly fine. So some people criticized him, but that's much more fair than saying like, um, I'm, I'm going to play. And then two days before the tournament, you know, I'm not really ready. So it's like, what are you doing? Like, come on, be more genuine. Like, I, I really wish that Nadal was more authentic, more genuine and not controlled by his PR something like Djokovic like look I'm not ready I don't really care about hardcore season and everybody would say that because honesty uh and and basically publicly saying what you want sets you free I think a lot of people would be like yeah of course it makes fucking sense like you're Rafael Nadal you're a 14 time Roland Garros champion of course you want to play under clay, clay season you of course don't clay don't clay don't care about Indian Wells and so on so I think that would be fair um, but he doesn't really do that. So it, it's kind of weird. And if I would have to compare Rafael Nadal to a boxer, I think he's a guy who has to have a training camp. He has to practice a lot. He's not a guy who's going to go in there and take an ass beating. He's not a guy who can you call up and say, okay, you have a fight in one week. Will you take it? Do you want to take it? He's not that. He has to practice. He has to train. He has to get ready. He's not like, I don't know, Federer. Federer was a guy who never really practiced you know, that hard, he can just go in and play, uh, Djokovic, I respect Novak a lot, he knew a lot of times that he was going to take a ass whooping, he played Nadal more times on clay than Nadal played Djokovic in hard courts, think about that, like clay season is three masters tournaments, one grand slam, hard court season is six masters tournaments, two grand slams, uh, and season ending tournaments, so basically more than double length, and they played more than clay than hardcore because Nadal is just kind of openly like ducking, but not saying that he's ducking. And Novak is always a guy who who's like, look, I'm just going to go in there. And if I lose, I lose. I lost to the better player. I'm here to play tennis. If I get my ass beat like I did in, I don't know, 2020, it is what it is. It's tennis. It's perfectly normal. So I would respect Rafael Nadal a bit more or a lot more if he would be uh, more honest about it. And another example for this is for... a for example, uh, Novak Djokovic 2021 Australian Open versus Rafael Nadal 2022 Wimbledon. They actually had a really similar injury, a abdominal tear, uh, versus the same player. That's also interesting. Taylor Fritz, Australian Open 2021, third round, and Taylor Fritz, Wimbledon 2022 uh, quarterfinals. They both actually managed to beat Taylor Fritz in five sets with their respective abdominal tears. So what happened? Novak Djokovic kept going. He played, I think, Raonic, Zverev, Karatsev, and Medvedev. So, you know, playing Zverev in the quarterfinals is difficult. Raonic, he always beats Raonic, but he has an injury. Uh, Karatsev is an easy match. And then Medvedev, who's a really good player. And then what happened with Rafael Nadal? He had Nick Kyrgios in the semifinal, which he uh, doesn't really want to play because Nick Kyrgios is in good, or Nick Kyrgios was in good shape, and Nick Kyrgios actually beat him at Wimbledon already. And then he would have to face Novak Djokovic in the final or Cam Nori, but we all know that it was going to be Novak Djokovic. So what Novak did was, okay, fine, let me just try this. Let me just play. I don't care what the media said. I don't care if they are going to say that I faked an injury or something like I don't care. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go out there and try. And guess what happened? He won the tournament. 
And he would have done the same thing if that would have happened at the French Open. If he would have gotten like injured, and even if Nadal was on the other side of the draw waiting for him in the final, he would have played and he would have gone, gone out there and, you know, at least tried. But what Nadal did is kind of like, okay, I see Kyrgios, Kyrgios is in good form, Kyrgios is really nasty on the grass, I'm probably going to lose because I am injured, uh, I'm going to lose like 70% of the time, but even if I win, I have Djokovic in the final, he's going to beat me comfortably, so I am going to pull out. And he pulled out, and then he played in Cincinnati, which isn't a huge freaking gap, and then he played in uh, the US Open. So it's not like his abdomen was like completely torn off and he had to have sports hernia surgery or something like that. He had a minor tear, same as Novak Djokovic. So that's the difference between Djokovic and Nadal. I do not like when Nadal ducks. I, I understand that he's not comfortable, he's not confident, and he thinks that he, he cannot win, but I appreciate a fighter. I appreciate a guy who will go into the final 10 times and lose 9 times uh, and then win once, then a guy who's going to duck, 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 and then, you know, finally, when everything's together, when everything's ready, he's going to go into that one, finally, he's going to win that tournament. Um, So that's my kind of semi-brand two cents when it comes to Rafael Nadal. I would say that I kind of feel sorry for him because obviously he wants to try, he wants to play. I think a part of him actually wants to retire, but there is somebody, there's a there's a lot of PR, there's a lot of people around Nadal who's pushing him and he just cannot, I think, be genuine, be himself, like Novak does quite often, or be just honest like Federer was when it comes to clay season. Uh, and, you know, I have to respect Rafael Nadal because he is a legend of the sport, so I do not feel like, I do not really want to mock and criticize and all that, uh, even though I'm a Novak fan, because I think it's unfair, I think it's unsportsmanlike, I think a lot of Fidal fans mocked and criticized Novak Djokovic when he was down, when he was injured, so I do not want to... Uh, speak negatively about Rafael Nadal, I'm just telling that he, sh he kind of is supposed to be more genuine, more authentic, and I would respect him much, much more, and I think a lot of people would respect him much, much more, so um, that's pretty much it, by the way, I know I said this five times already, but I think I'm gonna buy a camera either tomorrow or two days from now, and I'm also buying a microphone, so the quality will be higher, I'm going to learn how to edit, by the way, thank you for 400 subscribers, it really means a lot to me, thank you very much for watching this video, and see you.